Hello. Back in 1991, I bought this camcorder, a Canon E850 High, and the instruction book mentioned an interesting feature. And today we're going to look at that feature, and it brings on a whole wealth of understanding about video formats. So let's first demonstrate the feature, and then see whether that can apply to other formats beyond Video 8. So what we have here is a Hi8 camcorder and it was um, reasonably high-end in its day that it has some features here that I never really appreciated. It could do some silly things with um, adding music and nonsense like that but uh, in general quite a com competent uh, Hi8 camcorder. But we're looking today at a playback feature our playback functions here as you'd expect. You can play and then you can do picture search. So if we hit play, right, so we're playing a tape, we press fast forward and it goes into picture search and you see the picture at high speed. Uh, we've gone to a blank bit of tape here, but uh, you can see that works as you'd expect. The dropout compensator doesn't work in picture search, so you tend to get a lot of dropouts, but all that's fairly normal. But the interesting thing is that you can press fast forward and it will fast forward at uh, full speed but then if you press fast forward again you get to see what is fast forwarding without it going through stop and it does so at higher than, than picture search speed so let's demonstrate that fast forward and now press fast forward again and then you get a high speed picture search and it doesn't even slow down. That's very handy, so you can just set a tape in fast forward or rewind and think, oh, where am I in the tape? Press the button again, be it rewind or fast forward, whichever way you're going, and see what's winding. Let's do it again, we're in rewind, press the rewind button, and you go through high speed rewind. And this is described in the user manual. I have seen it described as peep search. Now this feature, also applied prior to Video 8 Hi8, uh, on Beta. Sony had it on some of their machi machines and they called it Sony, uh, Beta Skip Scan. Now this was obviously a bit of one-upmanship because they were saying this is Beta Skip Scan, you can do this on Beta, you can't do it on VHS. Things have changed. That feature, which sometimes had a name and sometimes didn't have a name, appeared on many camcorders and video uh, players and recorders since, but not all. Sometimes because they couldn't do it, sometimes because the manufacturers didn't bother to implement it. And it brings on the whole question of how video recorders lace up, because some machines cannot do it, because they're not in a position to do so during a fast forward and rewind procedure. So let's uh, use this book actually, this wonderful old book about uh, working on video recorders happens to have a bit in it which uh, nicely demonstrates what we're talking about and then we can have a look at that on not just some domestic formats but also professional formats. Thank you to uh, the Canon camcorder for nicely demonstrating that feature some uh, 32 years after it was built. This is the book we're going to be looking at uh, because it gives us some good diagrams and explains a few of the features we're going to be talking about. However, it also is partly out of date and partly has some thumping great mistakes in it. So we'll uh, look at those as we go along. So the section in this book about lacing and threading. Okay, so threading, lacing, same thing. And what you have in a typical video recorder, this is an early beta one, but the principles apply to almost all video recorders, is you have a cassette, the tape is drawn out of the cassette by one means or another, maybe a loading ring, it may be arms that, that move across, and they wrap the tape around the head, which is a spinning video head, and that has uh, at least two head tips typically, very often more, uh, which scan across the tape creating uh, a recording pattern. So you have long 
stripes along the length of the tape uh, which contain the video information uh, and the tape needs to go over the heads which spin and recover that uh, analog information but additionally many video recorders, most video recorders um, certainly in the analog domain have an audio and control head which records audio on one track and control pulses on another uh, at the edges of the tape. So typically you have uh, a, a tape with audio tracks at the top and control tracks at the bottom in case, in case of a VHS and beta, somewhat different on 8mm. And uh, the head drum, it's a rotating drum, has at least two head tips to record these longitudinal stripes of video information. And there's another beta arrangement as is more common on later beta machines and this is a VHS one. Uh, and one of the things we need to get across is the whole principle of when does it do this lacing. Our book tells us that VHS and 8mm decks thread the tape only for play and record plus fast forward and, and reverse picture search and the tape is unthreaded for fast forward and rewind. Conversely for beta the tape is always threaded until the tape the eject button is pressed. That is very wrong. Okay, I'll go through way, the way the threading and unthreading actually happens on different formats later, but uh, there are a number of mistakes in that. Let's uh, have a look at what we're trying to do here. If you have a machine where the tape is laced all the time, such as this beta machine, you have a key advantage. Because the audio control head is always available uh, next to the tape, it's possible to count the pulses from the control signal on that head during fast forward and rewind, not just play. And this means you can have a real-time counter. You can tell the user where you are in hours, minutes and seconds of recorded tape Whereas a machine that does a full unlace will not have any idea where, where it is in terms of the recording. And it may be able to do an estimate of where you are on the tape by counting the spool speeds as some V2000 machines do. But it won't know precisely where it is on the tape. Early Sony beta machines had a clear advantage over early VHS machines in that they had real-time counters and that was a feature that couldn't really be added to VHS at the time. However, this was not true of later Sanyo machines. Sanyo Beta from the VTC 5000 onwards unlaced during fast forward and rewind and so they had the same disadvantage of uh, the VHS machines of the same vintage. And anyway, the beta machines, the Sanyo beta machines, never implemented real-time uh, counters. They did it to reduce head wear and to allow the tape to rewind and fast forward more quickly. So here's a VHS laced up. Uh, it doesn't have the loading ring arrangement of beta. It has arms that swing around and it's sort of very vaguely M-shaped. So they call it M-loading. And if this fully unlaces during fast forward and rewind it loses contact with the audio control head doesn't know where it is and so fast forward and rewind is fast and low wear on the system but is very dumb all you have is a mechanical counter this applied to all the early VHS machines but with the clear advantage that Sony beaters at least over uh, VHS had that they knew where they were because they could see the control head. The uh, VHS manufacturers thought they'd better catch up with this. They didn't want to necessarily be fully laced all the time because it was felt that the rewinding and fast forwarding a tape in fully laced condition on VHS due to the angles the tape went through involved too much wear on the heads and tape. So they came up with half loading and 
This wasn't anything new. That's true also of Umatic, which is an old video format that predated VHS and Beta as a professional format. And that also does a half load where it keeps the tape at least in contact with the audio control head. If you have VHS in this half loaded position, then you can keep the tape in contact with the audio control head, even if it's not around the head drum. And that gives you kind of the best of both worlds in that you can fast forward and rewind relatively quickly, but you can still keep count of where you are uh, using a real time counter. And that's mentioned here. Real time counters was a reason that they added that feature. It's worth mentioning that uh, another difference between VHS and Beta was the way they handled hi-fi sound, at least in NTSC countries. So uh, in NTSC Beta they were able to embed the hi-fi audio uh, in the video signal and it didn't imply much cost increase uh, in order to uh, add hi-fi stereo sound to Beta on NTSC, but it wasn't possible on uh, VHS because there wasn't any area they could add that uh, audio signal, so they had to add extra heads and do hi-fi sound by depth multiplexing. And that's true of VHS in NTSC and PAL countries, but it's actually true of Beta as well in PAL countries because there wasn't uh, the uh, required space in the bandwidth uh, in PAL for Beta to add hi-fi either. So VHS had to conjure up the answer to Beta hi-fi and then Beta hi-fi stole that idea when it came to PAL, which is rather amusing, isn't it? Now, this is a NTSC based book, it should be said. So, it's made some mistakes here about uh, how tapes are laced and you might want to know why I'm on about all this and what's it got to do with the peep search feature that we were talking about on 8mm. Well, with 8mm it's an always laced format. So, at all times in play, re play record, fast forward and rewind, the tape is fully laced, with no exceptions, except the exception of course, which is that a few machines such as the EVS 9000E and an EVC 2000 had a turbo rewind feature where they would just do a turbo rewind in unlaced operation until it got almost to the end of the tape anyway. And then, of course, the real-time counter stopped working. But for the most part, 8mm is a fully laced format. And so, if you think about it, when it's doing fast-forward and rewind, how hard is it to just, well, enable the video heads and see the picture? Well, this is a better description here. So it's fully laced. You're in fast-forward. Drop into, when it's fast forwarding, drop into viewing what's on the head drum. You do have to do some, set the servos up properly so that you can see the image. But it doesn't have to be great quality, you just have to be able to see something. So that's the feature we were using on that Canon camcorder. And nearly all uh, Video 8 and Hi8 decks supported that feature, even if they didn't mention it in the instructions. Not quite all. Now, other formats could also have a very similar operation. We have here, well, this is a head cleaner tape, but it's mini DV, and they are also always laced. Are there any exceptions to that? No, I don't believe there are any exceptions. For the DV format, be it mini DV or any other size, uh, such as uh, DV Cam or DVC Pro, I believe they are always laced whenever the tape is in the machine. And could you add peep search to those? Could you, when it's fast forwarding and rewinding, drop in and get some kind of image? Yes, 
and nearly all mini dv camcorders do have that feature not all though jvc in particular were sad in that they didn't bother to fit it on many of their camcorders if not all of their camcorders so what about a later super vhs or vhs deck which is laced during most operations but semi laced during fast forward and rewind if that's in fast forward now and you want to be able to see what's on the tape how much would be involved in completing the loading cycle and viewing some of the material and then dropping it back into the half load position well most decks could probably pull that off pretty quickly not as instantly as a beta would but quick enough so many VHS or Super VHS machines did add that feature uh, and in particular Panasonic and JVC machines added the feature where you could see what you were fast forwarding by pressing a fast forward button again and it would take a, a second or so to lace up but at least it was quicker than going from, from completely unlaced to relace just to find out where you are on the tape. So VHS and Super VHS machines do not have peep search, but they emulate it as best they can. When we were talking about beta, it said in this book that beta is always laced in all operations, and that is simply not true. All Sony machines are always laced at all times, except when they're not, which is there was one machine, an industrial duplicator, that also had a turbo rewind function like the 8mm that would do unlaced high speed rewinding. But apart from that, all Sony machines are fully laced at all times. Sanyo models, they were fully laced all the time up until the VTC 5300, 5400, and then with their slightly strange numbering, they went to the 5000, which is a later model, and that is unlaced during fast forward and rewind, just like early VHS machines were. They never implemented peep search and they never implemented real-time counters. Same is true of Toshiba beta machines and you may have seen me working on a Toshiba beta, big old mechanical one, and that's always laced. Got you wondering now about other formats and whether they're laced and unlaced during fast forward and rewind? So we're looking here at one of the slightly later Umatic decks, not one of the very early um, top loading ones. So put the tape in and it goes into semi-laced position and you can see that the tape is going across the audio control head here. So it has access to the uh, counter pulses on the tape. But there is no option of course for peep search on this. We can't jump into the peep search mode from this point. If you want to go into picture search, you'd have to go into play. And then search. The Philips Grundig V2000 format. That's always unlaced during fast forward and rewind. Did not offer peep search and did not offer real time counters. The much older uh, VCR, VCR LP or N1500, N1700, they're always laced but they did not offer real-time counters or peep search because they were nearly always purely mechanical decks. There was an exception that had electronic control on a Grundig machine but uh, most of them were mechanically operated and couldn't offer sophisticated features. Professional formats such as Betacam, uh, digital Betacam, HD cam. Uh, they're always laced in fast forward and rewind and you can access fast forward and rewind very quickly uh, not always just by pressing a fast forward button the way that very uh, operated varied from one model to another on many sony uh, professional decks when you're in fast forward and rewind you will see the picture anyway whether you wanted to see picture search or not it's just always there some decks such as this hd cam sr machine doesn't even have a fast forward and rewind button. In order to move through the tape, you are always in picture search. I think that's a little bit unhelpful. I'd like a fast forward and rewind button on this deck. Here we have a digital beta cam player. When you hit fast forward, it actually uh, gives you a uh, picture search just as a matter of course, whether you asked for it or not.
If you press fast forward again, nothing happens because it's already in picture search. Let's have a look at the lacing mechanism on this one. Okay, so we put in this large size tape. This also takes a smaller beta max size tapes. So even though this is beta based, it does an M wrap like VHS. But unlike VHS, it stays laced all the time. So we're now in fast forward and it's still laced. And go into play. And apart from engaging the pinch roller, the mechanism stays in uh, much the same state. And let's uh, eject and watch it unlace. Surprisingly VHS-like, isn't it? We've also worked on the failed Panasonic M2 professional format in the past, and that also is fully laced during rewind and fast forward in the same way as Sony Betacam ones, even though M2 is actually VHS based. There are some other more obscure formats. Uh, this Technicolor Funai CVC machine is always unlaced in fast forward and rewind and does not offer real time counter or peep search. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the uh, high speed search mode that uh, many video recorders uh, have built in, be it called peep search or high speed search or uh, beta skip scan or nothing at all. It's useful. Uh, even though you don't necessarily know whether any particular machine has it other than just by trying it. But it's led on to a lot more uh, knowledge about formats and whether they are laced or unlaced or semi-laced during the fast forward and rewind modes. So uh, this is information I don't think has ever really been brought out before. No one's ever really discussed this before. So uh, hopefully this is a, a useful video for people in the future to have some idea about uh, all the various formats. Now, I've enjoyed looking at this book. There's a third edition as well. Uh, it does have some mistakes in it, but even so, it's well worth getting hold of a copy if you can, if you are interested in messing about with video recorders. Okay, it's American-based, so there's a lot of discussion about NTSC and particular machines um, of the era and of the market that it came from. But even so, a lot of the principles do very much apply. Now, before I sign off, I wanted to show you this collection of equipment that has been donated by a viewer, Malcolm of Plymouth, uh, and it includes some interesting equipment. There's some uh, Super VHS video recorders from Grundig. Now, I didn't even know Grundig made Super VHS video recorders. There's uh, audio and video switching gear, there's a Super VHS JVC machine, and remote controls and all kinds of things. So I'll be looking at those and plenty of other things in future YouTube videos. Do come by and see me do those. Bye for now.